Good morning and welcome you all to this session of the course. Uh, today we will discuss the compressor characteristics. Now, compressor characteristics or performance characteristics of compressors are usually expressed in terms of the ratio of the stagnation pressure and temperature. Now, let us first uh, have again a look that how do you make the nomenclature. This is the stagnation pressure at inlet to the compressor and this is the outlet from the compressor. We will use the same nomenclature that is at the outlet of the diffuser. And similarly, the stagnation or total temperature is T 1 T and T 3 T is the outlet temperature total temperature. So, with this nomenclature the compressor performance characteristics com today we will discuss compressor performance characteristics performance characteristics. So, performance characteristics for a centrifugal compressor are usually expressed in terms of the ratios of the total temperature or stagnation temperature. These are output parameters as a function of input this is output parameters and this is input parameters usually this is done input parameters this is output output parameters parameters ok. As a functions of n the rotational speed sorry here I can write n the rotational speed the size of the compressor d the mass flow rate m. So, this speed dam size of the compressor and the mass flow rate these are the parameters input parameters and the ratios are expressed in terms of this parameter the speed the size and the mass flow rate. So, now you see that this can be expressed in a functional relationship like this that a function of if we think in terms of the functional relationship we can write this n d m separately p 1 t p 3 t in case of this temperature we include r r t 3 t and these are the variables which define the performance of a centrifugal compression. Now, let me explain first these are the input parameters as I have told that this is the rotational speed this is the size that is the di overall diameter of the impeller this is the mass flow rate m this is the total pressure at the inlet to the compressor this is the total pressure at the outlet of the compressor outlet from the diffuser and this is the total temperature at inlet total temperature at outlet and they are multiplied with r they are because of the two things it is multiplied with r t has a fundamental dimension temperature but if you multiply with r r t becomes equal to p by rho and its dimension as a whole can be expressed in terms of m l t because p by rho is v square l square you can very well know that p by rho is l square v square. So, therefore, if you find out the dimension of r t it becomes a v square l square that means p by rho is v square the dimension wise ok dimension wise this dimension is v square l square by t square sorry l square by t square. So, therefore, it is l square by t square. So, therefore, multiplying with r taking care of the r as a whole to reduce the fundamental dimensions and at the same time taking care of the physical concept that T 1 T and T 3 T are very important parameters describing the centrifugal pump performance. Again another logic is there that you know that work done per unit mass or energy added per unit mass is given by change in C p times this C p times T 3 T or T 2 T whatever you call that means, it is the C p times the t and C p is what? C p is proportional to r that means, C p in case of specific heat at constant pressure it is gamma by gamma minus 1 into r. Gamma is the specific heat ratio that means, it takes care of r that means, T 
TA alone has got no function. If you take multiplied with CP, CPT is the index of the energy. CP, this T3, T minus T1, T is the work or energy input. On the other hand, RT, if you take together, this reduces the fundamental dimension by 1 and things become little simple. So, therefore, if you do this way, you can now explain that the entire phenomenon. Another thing very important that why we have not considered density because it is a compressible flow machine. From the beginning, I am telling that the density is very important in a compressible flow machine, but I am not including density. Density is implicitly included because P is included, RT is included. So, their ratio is the density. So, therefore, density is not included explicitly, it is implicit. So, therefore, all the variables describing the centrifugal pump performance is are there. How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and fundamental dimensions, fundamental dimensions are how many? Fundamental dimensions are 3, ml is equal to 3 that is mlt since we have considered the product rt. So, therefore, by Buckingham's pi theorem number of pi terms will be number of pi terms will be 7 minus 3, 4. Why you are doing this di dimensional analysis Bucking by applying Buckingham's pi theorem? Because we want to express this relation in terms of non-dimensional variables rather than dimensional variables which will be reducing the number from 7 to 4. Now, by applying the st standard procedure of uh, dimensional analysis, what we do? We take three repeating variables. Here, what are the repeating variables? We take the repeating variables as d, we take the repeating variables as p1t and we take the repeating variable as rt1t. This d, p1t and rt1t are taken as the repeating variables. These are taken as r, they are taken as you just see that repeating variables. They are taken as you can see repeating variables. And following the dimensional analysis with these three as the repeating variables, if we combine with n, then you get a pi term that is your task you can do n d divided by root over r t 1 t. I am now writing this. That means, this takes the n. Now, d is the repeating variable when you combines with m these three repeating variables d p 1 t r 1 t. Then, the second pi term comes as m root over r t 1 t divided by d square into p 1 t. Okay? Then, if you take this p 3 t is the one then automatically when obviously when one of the repeating variables has the same dimension it is a thumb rule and if you do it you will get that p 3 t by p 1 t is the pi 3 and similarly pi 4 fourth pi term which will be found out with uh, what is that p 3 t then t 3 t then with this you will get since, since t 3 t and t 1 t are the same dimension we automatically get t 3 t by t 1 t. This is by thumb rule. It will always come and if you follow this uh, dimension analysis, analysis you will find the same thing. Okay. Now, therefore, the equation can be written as some functional relationship of the non-dimensional term. That means, n d by root over r t 1 t m root over r t 1 t divided by d square p 1 t p 3 t by p 1 t t 3 t the ratio of total pressures and the ratio of total temperature is equal to 0. So, before proceeding further I like to tell you that these two, these two are very clear, they are the ratios of total pressure and total temperature. These two have some physical significance. For example, this pi 1 n d, what is the physical significance? R t 1 t, what is the physical significance? Now, n d is proportional to the tip speed of the impeller. A rotational speed, 
into the impeller diameter. And root over R T O on T, I told you that this sound speed is given by root over gamma R T, so it is proportional to the sound speed, acoustic speed in the medium relative to the flow. So, therefore, this is proportional to U by A and which is known as Mach number based on rotor speed. So, therefore, this pi term signifies physically some sort of Mach number based on rotor speed. Now, this pi 2 if we write here that pi 2 m root over r t 1 t divided by d square p 1 t. Now, this can be written m can be written in terms of flow velocity and the density rho the flow area a and the flow velocity v f root over r t 1 t divided by d square p 1 t. Now, one can write p 1 t by rho is proportional to root over a proportional to r t 1 t p by rho is r t. So, though this is total pressure and this is this density. So, therefore, it is r t 1 t. So, therefore, this can be written as by cancelling that this is proportional to a v f then this will be cancelling out d square root over r t 1 r t 1 t because this square root and this is this is under root this is not under root. So, root over t. So, therefore, this will be proportional to v a by again a that means this is Mach number based on flow velocity this is known as flow Mach number this is known as rotor speed Mach number that means physically this pi term represents a Mach number based on rotor speed velocity and this pi term represents a Mach number based on flow velocity. This is just for your physical implication. Now, one thing that if we express this relationship try to express for a particular machine then d is not necessary to be included d is constant we can drop d and moreover it is for a particular gas for example, the air then r also can be omitted here r is there here r is there. So, therefore, for a given machine with a given gas the same relationship which is used non dimensionally this can be written as some other function for example, the function a function of n by root over t 1 t then this will be m root over t 1 t follow it clearly by p 1 t p 3 t by p 1 t t 3 t by t 1 t and for a given machine for a with a given gas the relationship can be expressed like that. Now, you see here these two are not truly dimensionless or truly non dimensional because we have dropped the term r and d. But what happens is that even if they are dimensional term, but we take the help of the non dimensional analysis to reduce the number of terms. So, the number of variables are reduced where some of the variables which combines other primary variables may not be non dimensional, but that does not matter for a given size and for given fluid we can use this as a functional relationship of the performance. So, usually what happens is that the performance now is expressed like this that a family of curve is generated as the ratio of the pressure with the I will not tell this is non dimensional uh, mass flow rate this is normalized mass flow rate the word normalized does not mean non dimensional different families of curves I am not drawing the curve at present different families of curves for different values for different values of n by root over t 1 t in one family another family is the different value the same thing the same thing this m root over t 1 t by p 1 t and here is the ratio p 3 t by p 1 t with the different values of m root over t 1 t by p 1 t. That means, two families of curves for both the ratio of total pressures and total temperatures 
for different parametric values for each family of the normalized rotational speed and normalized mass flow rate. This is basically the way the performance parameters that performance characteristics of a centrifugal pump is expressed. Now, I will show you how does it look in case of a pressure ratio. Now, I will show you the, the very important a very important curve P 3 T that is the pressure ratio P 1 T versus the non dimensional mass flow normalized sorry normalized mass flow P 1 T the curve looks like this I tell you the curve looks like this the curve looks like this I will explain let me first draw the label the curve now I explain the three points are important point in understanding this. Now what happens the if you make an experiment and draw the points you will get a curve like that initially it increases with a positive slope reaches a maximum then it has a negative slope continuously decreases and probably at high values of mass flow rate it touches the abscissa where the pressure ratio is 1 actually the pressure ratio starts from 1. Okay. Now, try to understand physically the fact that when the mass flow rate is 0, there is a pressure ratio. Why? This is because in a centrifugal pump, try to understand when the mass flow rate is 0, means that you st stop the delivery valve here. Then what happens? The impeller goes on rotating. So, therefore, a centrifugal head or centri the energy is imparted on the fluid in terms of a pressure rise. So, therefore, a pressure rise will take place in the impeller because of the centrifugal action which we call the centrifugal head is impressed on the fluid is imposed on the fluid. So, fluid may not move in the diffuser there will be a static fluid a static field is there pressure field and that pressure is due to the churning action of the fluid in the impeller which imposes a static pressure rise because of the centrifugal action this we call it centrifugal head. That means, the centrifugal head because of the rotation of the impeller is imposed on the fluid even if the valve is closed here. So, a pressure ratio will be developed. So, that is the pressure ratio by the action of the impeller rotation which is shown here at this point. Now, when we slowly open the valve of a uh, of the uh, delivery line then what happens the flow commences. And when the flow commences, again you see that the flow takes place through the diffuser vents so, and also the vanless space. Now, when the diffusion process takes place through vanless space and the diffuser vents as a whole which is shown in the diffuser, then what happens? Again, pressure rise takes place because of the diffusion process. So, therefore, the rise in pressure takes place as we increase the mass flow rate. Okay? as we increase the mass flow rate the rise in pressure takes place. This means that diffuser contributes its quota diffuser contributes its quota to the pressure rise because of the diffusion process. Okay. So, because of that the pressure rise increases and reaches a point maximum why beyond which if you increase the mass flow rate it will not be manifested in terms of the pressure rise. This is because of the frictional losses as I explained earlier in the last class that frictional losses composed of skin friction loss at the same time the losses due to separation. Okay. Along with that the incidence losses are there. So, altogether the losses increases for which an increase in mass flow rate is not manifested with an increase in pressure ratio rather by a decrease in pressure ratio and this point corresponds to the maximum efficiency of the compressor. So, below which the compressor efficiency drastically falls okay, because of the losses and if we go on increasing the mass flow rate for a given rotational speed for example, here we give a rotational speed I tell you this is valid for one rotational normalized rotational speed one normalized rotational speed I show this particular curve for a given rotational speed there may be a point which may or may not be obtained in practice, but there may be a point for a given rotational speed if I go on uh, uh, opening the valve wider and wider the mass flow rate may be such that the pressure ratio may be unity that means there is no pressure rise 
the entire energy given to the compressor to handle is being used to overcome the frictional losses in handling a huge mass flow rate. Okay? So, that particular point may not be available for a given speed n, but it is theoretically envisaged can be envisaged. So, physically it is possible for a given end there may be a point which gives a mass flow rate where pressure drop pressure ratio is unity that means the entire energy is utilized to overcome the friction. So, therefore, A, B, C three points are important and this is a particular curve and this way we can generate a family of curve with different rotational speed and similarly with different normalized mass flow rate. So, the characteristic curve is like that which has a positive slope maximum point corresponds to maximum efficiency then there is a negative slope. Here the most important thing now I will discuss is the instability of this part of the characteristic curve. Now, this part of the characteristic curve is having a positive slope and usually this part is unstable and is very difficult to have this part of the curve in practice. Rather this part which is associated with a negative slope that pressure rise and mass flow rate curve is stable. How I explain it? Now, let us consider a compressor like this. Let us com consider a compressor like this. This is impeller, this is diffuser, this is totally the compressor. Try to understand this compressor. Okay. And what we do? This is the delivery. And we control a, a valve delivery valve here and this is further downstream of the compressor where the compressor is discharging air. This is the downstream the two thing you have to understand downstream of compressor compressor downstream of compressor and this is the compressor delivery this is the delivery end delivery end. Now, consider a case that the compressor is running with a given speed this valve is open part partially at steady state some flow is there and compressor is discharging steadily. And let the operational point is on the positive part of the curve let this point is D. Now, what happens? by any chance if there is a reduction in flow in the compression by any disturbance or any closure of the valve then what happens a decrease in flow rate here if you see is accompanied by a decrease in pressure ratio because this is in the positive slope the figure tells like that. So, therefore, the delivery pressure will fall immediately. Now, what happens you see again that this part of the curve is such initially it is very steep then finally it becomes flat as it happens for a curve which has a maximum then it reaches a maximum because gradient has to be 0 here. So, if this point is little bit on the steeper side of the curve then this pressure falls rapidly. So, the delivery end pressure falls rapidly while due to the reduced mass flow rate the downstream side where this compressor is delivering air does not fall that rapidly. So, therefore, what happens as a result this pressure becomes higher than the delivery pressure that means a pressure gradient for flow is generated in the reverse direction this is a high pressure and this is a low pressure. So, therefore, the flow starts from the downstream end of the compressor to its delivery side that means to the compressor understand because of this if this does not fall rapidly whether this falls what happens in this part there may be a point and usually it happens so that this is reduced more rapidly than that at downstream. When the flow takes place like this then what happens the net flow through the compressor delivered by the compressor is reduced by the opposing flow. So, therefore, the flow rate is still reduced and the pressure is still reduced in turn it affects in reduction of delivery pressure. Again the reverse flow is increased and this way what happens this makes the flow in the compressor totally 0 there is no flow that means compressor cannot deliver air anymore. But still the delivery side there is a pressure pressure ratio that I explained because of the impeller action 
and by that time what happens since the mass flow delivery is totally shut down is reduced gradually gradually to zero then the delivery side pressure is reduced when the delivery side pressure is reduced at this condition a then what happens this pressure becomes high and it takes up again repeats the flow in the positive direction and therefore it starts repeating the cycle that means it starts flowing in this direction again an instability in reducing the flow causes the flow reversal so therefore what happens a small disturbance in reducing the flow in this zone makes a repeating cycle that means the flow reversal takes place again flow the so flow comes in again flow goes in this direction comes this direction goes this direction so this type of flow reversal takes place when the operating point is on the steeper side of the positive slope part of the characteristic curve and this is known as surging surging of the compressor clear this is it is very important thing now you see this instability type of instability known as surging is not there in the negative uh, slope part of the car because here what happens if there is a decrease in mass flow rate this is associated with increase in pressure decrease in mass flow rate increase in pressure so no a flow reversal that means from the downstream to the compressor side can take place so therefore this part is unstable and another thing i told you since the slope is steeper initially and then flat so there is not necessarily that the point has to be immediately that down upstream of this b left side of the b that means there may be a point here even there may be a part of this positive slope where the surging will not occur that means surging may not start when the operating point falls just left of b the maximum efficiency curve there may be some point away some distance away from the maximum point where from the surging can start the onset of surging is there so this can be well understood by this particular figure well this can be well understood by this particular figure now if i draw a show you this figure you see that as i told earlier that this is the curve the characteristic curves now this point that means if i find out the such onset of such point d for all curves of the family for different values of the parameter and if they are joined this is the surge line this is the locus of the starting of the surge point that means this part of the curve for a given value 0.6 of this n by root over t1 t is the stable part is the stable part is the stable part is the stable part and this cross point at the maximum efficiency that means this line is the locus of points of maximum efficiency and this line is the surge line so this part of the curve is characteristic curve is stable this is n root over t1 t and this is with respect to mass okay now you understand you have understood this thing now next what i like to tell you that uh, okay another important thing is there on this side of the car curve that is in the negative slope there is another interesting point e where we may stop what is that now you consider when the flow rate is increased the pressure drop decreases pressure decreases for example if you make the valve wide open so what happens the flow rate is increased delivery pressure is decreased and a decrease in delivery pressure decreases the rho now velocity of flow is proportional to mass flow rate divided by area into rho so a decrease in the mass flow rate sorry increase in the mass flow rate and a decrease in the density because of decrease in the pressure because you see increase in mass flow rate is associated with decrease in pressure with the negative part of negative slope part this part makes a huge increase in flow velocity and it may so happen that is also not always possible depending upon the value of n that a point may come when the sonic velocity may be attained at some part of the compressor so when the sonic velocity is attained we cannot increase the flow any more by any change in the downstream this will be explained again in detail in your compressible flow class and that is known as choking that is known as choking so the maximum flow condition choking of flow 
when the flow at any part becomes sonic that means the compressor will run there is absolutely no problem but no further increase in mass flow rate possible that means there is a point here which will on the characteristic curve which will indicate the limit of the maximum flow rate so therefore i will show you here also along with the surge along with the constant along with the locus of the surge point onset of surge the maximum efficiency point there may be another line this is the joining of the e point there which is the choking or the maximum flow limit choking line or maximum flow line so therefore the stable part of the characteristic line is bounded by its left extreme by the locus of maximum a locus of the surge line onset of surge surge line in the extreme right is the choking line maximum flow line and in between is the maximum efficiency line okay it's clear so this is as a whole is the uh, uh, this is as a whole is the your um, characteristic curve okay i think it is all right now we will and uh, stop the discussion and we will try to solve some problem okay now here it is okay now let us see a problem now okay okay here also i did a mistake this will be not this will be a repetition of this this will be n uh, sorry this will be m we are writing n by root over t1 t and this will be for t3 t by t1 t this i did a mistake earlier this will be like this the two curves okay now let us solve a problem so we have discussed the principle of uh, the characteristic curves the concept of surge the surge line the maximum efficiency line and the choking line now let us consider this problem a centrifugal compressor has an impeller tip speed 360 meter per second this is the impeller tip speed determine absolute mach number of flow leaving the radial vents of the impeller and the mass flow rate the following data are given so data are given so let us see that mach number of flow leaving the radial vents absolute mach number means based on absolute velocity if we recall the vein now let me recall the vein like this sorry this is the vein it is not oh ho oh. then this is the vein okay this is the vein now if this is the vein then what is the uh, diagram that the velocity diagram let me say better show these things which i earlier shown you oh, yes this is the thing i think this will be better to show like this we can make things like this can you see okay please why i am writing that why i am not doing the radial one here one thing is important that slip factor is given 0.9 that means here due to the slip what happens we have a this is the rotating in this direction u2 so vr2 is not radial because there is a slip so vw2 this is vw2 vw2 and vw2 is less than u2 what is u2 u2 is this one okay this is this is u2 so this is the absolute velocity v2 and this velocity is vf2 this is vf2 so this is the diagram because there is a slip so therefore this is the outlet triangle now what i will do i will write what has to be found out that it has to be found out the mach number based on absolute velocity at the outlet of the impeller so therefore i have to find out mach number v2 by root over gamma r t2 okay now how to find out v2 v2 is the absolute velocity now v2 is root over this is vf2 vf2 square plus this is vw2 
VW2 square. Now, VW2 is not U2. Okay, this is U2, this is U2. So, VW2 is sigma U2. Okay, now U2 is 360 meter per second. Vf2 is given flow area, power input factor, impeller, tip speed, uh, flow area, mass flow rate. So, Vf2 is not given, impeller tip speed is given, radial component of flow velocity is given. Vf2 is 30 meter per second. You see that Vf2 is 30 meter per second. So, therefore, you get V2 is equal to 30 square plus. 0 0.9 into 360 square. I will not do everything calculations square and this way you will get a value of V2 equals to what is the value of let me tell you the value of um, V2 here um, the value of V2 is 325 you can check 325.38 meter per second. Now, to find out the Mach number, you require this static temperature. Here in the formula, it is gamma R T2. T2 is the static temperature at the outlet of the vein. Now, how to find out T2? Now, our main objective is to find out T2. How to find out T2? Now, let us first find out the total temperature T2 T. We know that T2 T here, T2 T is equal to T3 T. That means outlet total temperature from the compressor at the outlet of the diffuser. And we know that C p into T 2 T minus T 1 T that is the work done that is is equal to psi sigma that power input factor U 2 square divided this is ok. So, now here you see T 1 T is given where because the inlet stagnation temperature 300 K is given psi is given power input factor is given, power input factor is given 1. Now, slip is given 0 0.9, sigma is given 0 0.9, psi 1, u 2 is given 360 meter per second, t 1 t is given the inlet stagnation temperature is 300 k. So, everything is given except t 2 t from which we can find out t 2 t equals to what? T 2 T becomes equal to ultimately if you calculate T 2 T will be 416 K. I am not writing every step because everything I know power input factor is given in the problem, slip factor is given in the problem and T 1 T is given in the problem, U 2 is given in the problem. Again I show you the problem that impeller tip speed is 360 meter per second, radial component of flow velocity 30 meter, slip factor is 0.9 flow area at impeller exit is 0.1 square, it is not now required, power input factor is given, isentropic efficiency given, inlet stagnation temperature, inlet stagnation pressure, then R and gamma. So, here what is required? Power input factor which is given as 1, the slip factor which is given as 0 0.9, U2 is 360 meter per second and T1 T is 300 K, we get T2 T. Now, what happened T 2 how to find out T 2? Now, T 2 has to be found out from the concept of the stagnation temperature. What is that? T 2 plus the temperature dynamic velocity equivalence, temperature equivalence of the dynamic head that is V 2 square by 2 C p. That is the temperature equivalent of the kinetic energy V 2 square by 2. That is this plus this is the total temperature from which we can find out T 2 is T 2 T is now found out 416. Now, V 2 already we have found out 325.38 meter per second. The value of C p has to be found out from R and gamma which you have read at school level that the specific that constant pressure is gamma by gamma minus 1 into R. So, you know the C p. So, therefore, from here you can find out the static temperature as 363.33 K. Everything is known. So, we know the static temperature. When we substitute the static temperature here, we get the Mach number equal to the Mach number 2 for example, the 2 suffix I am using equals to 0 0.85. All right. 
Now, the next is the to find out the mass flow rate. How to find out the mass flow rate? You see the mass flow rate. Let me keep it here so that you can see it. Now, mass flow rate to find out mass flow rate. Let us write the mass flow rate. Mass flow rate is same throughout the machine. Let us write the, write the mass flow rate based on the condition at the outlet of the diffuser rho, rho 2, the A2 and the flow velocity. This. Now, here A2 is the flow area at the outlet of the impeller which is given you see here flow area is given radial component of flow velocity the mass flow rate impeller tip speed flow area at impeller exit that means a2 is already given 0 0.1 meter square so what is not given vf2 is given the radial flow velocity component of that impeller exit is given vf2 is given vf2 is what 30 meter per second it is all right 30 meter per second what is not given rho 2 so how to calculate rho 2 now rho 2 is p2 by r t2 now t2 i know the static temperature already t2 already is calculated here so i don't know p2 how to calculate p2 now before calculating p2 you have to calculate the stagnation pressure then if you calculate the stagnation pressure then you can calculate the static pressure so how to calculate the stagnation pressure so stagnation pressure you can calculate p2 by p1 t from your this earlier formula 1 plus eta c into you can write like that t2 t minus t1 t divided by t1 t to the power this has been told earlier gamma by gamma minus 1. So, you remember this one that is the pressure this comes from where this comes from the isentropic relationship and then using the isentropic efficiency of the compression. Well, so using this relationship we can find out this relationship if you remember this was derived in the class that means I find out this way that if these are the two pressure lines then what happens this p2 t p1 t then this is the thing this is the t2 t t1 t and this is the t2 t dash so p2 t by p1 t is t2 t dash by t1 t to the power gamma by gamma minus 1 now this t2 t dash, dash t1 t is found out by expressing this eta c is t2 t dash minus t1 t i repeat again this was done earlier minus t1 t. So, therefore, t2 t dash that means p2 t by p1 t is t2 t dash by t1 t to the power this is the isentropic relationship p t relationship. So, this thing is taken from here t2 t dash by t1 t is eta c into this plus 1. So, eta c into this by t1 t plus 1. So, therefore, we can write this. This is the thing done earlier. Now, T2 T minus T1 T you know already you know T2 T you already know T2 T. T2 T is find out T2 T is 416 K. You know T1 T T1 T is 300 K given. Eta C is given in the problem. Eta C is what? Eta C is 0.9. So, therefore, T1 T is known everything is known you find out the P2 T. Now, after knowing the P2 T, you have to know the P2 because how? Because rho 2 is P2 by R T2. I wrote it earlier uh, R T2. So, you have to know the st static pressure. Now, how to know the static pressure? By the concept of stagnation pressure. P2 by P2 T is T2 by T2 T to the power gamma by where from it comes? That means, the static pressure is changed to stagnation pressure that means when this is brought rest isentropically that means this process of changing from p2 to p2 t is obtained by bringing the fluid isentropically to rest that means therefore the gain in temperature t2 t from t2 is made isentropically so that the pressure ratio will be related to the isentropic relationship with the temperature ratio this is the relationship between total or stagnation pressure to the static pressure. So, therefore, T2, T2, T is known, therefore, we get P2. 
so we can find out p2 you understand so from here we find out p2t p2t is known here we find out p2t p2t is found out here and here we find out p2 because p2t is known so finally p2 is fine first we find out the ratio of the total pressure in terms of this you know everything p1 t you know you know p2t when you know p2t you know p2 from this equation so p2 is find out so when p2 is found out then you can find out rho2 from p2 by rt2 and you can find out the mass flow rate so i am not doing things by putting the numerical value but i tell you the way so this value is you check 5.09 kg because this will take more time to solve this by putting this value so that's why i am not doing so you if you put these values you will get the result i think there will be absolutely no problem now only substitute the numerical value and get the results and check the results with this okay now next another problem i will discuss before i leave you so another problem is this one let us consider a problem like this the following data are suggested as a basis for the design of a single sided centrifugal compressor single sided power input factor is 1.04 slip factor 0.9 almost the similar problem which we discussed earlier rotational speed is 290 revolution per second overall impeller diameter 0.5 m i tip i root diameter air mass flow rate is given inlet stagnation temperature is given inlet stagnation pressure isentropic efficiency now what is to be found out determine pressure ratio of the compressor power requirement inlet angles of impeller vanes at root and tip ready of the eye now let us find out the most simple uh, thing the pressure ratio how to find out the pressure ratio now pressure ratio to find out what we have to do let us again write the pressure ratio formula if you write the pressure ratio now i write p3t by p1t is equal to in terms of the stagnation temperature rise i think this you know again and again i am writing just now i have discussed this just now i have discussed this that the stagnation or total pressure ratio here also the pressure ratio of the compressor total pressure ratio p3t by p1t has to be found out now therefore what do we require we require t3t minus t1t how to find out t3t minus t1t again the same formula we know the work done to the fluid per unit mass or the energy added to the fluid per unit mass it is psi power input factor sigma u square u2 square now this thing can be found out provided psi sigma u2 square is given what is given in the problem let me see this problem gives rotational speed and overall impeller diameter 290 revolution per second and overall impeller diameter 0.5 so u2 is equal to pi into the overall diameter 0.5 into 290 is equal to the rotational speed that means the tangential speed is 4555 meter per second that means u2 is known sigma is given in the problem if you see the slip factor is 0.9 sigma is power input factor is 1.04 so if you put everything you get the value of t3t minus t1t which becomes equal to t3t minus t1t is 193k here the value of cp is not given in the problem if the problem the value of cp is not given in any case you can use that for air the value of cp is 1.005 kilo joule this is the specific heat per kg k so therefore you can use the value of cp that and get t3 minus t and eta c is probably given in the uh, where is eta c overall there is this isentropic efficiency 0.78 when you get the isentropic efficiency 0.78 this is this t1t is given t1t is the inlet stagnation temperature inlet stagnation or total temperature whatever you call 295k so everything is known and this p3t equals to what is the value equals to 4.23 this you can check so you can find out so 
pressure ratio of the compressor is found. A power requirement, power requirement is mass flow rate into Cp, this work done per unit mass T1, either this or this, both the things are same. So, anyway you find out the mass flow rate is given probably, otherwise power cannot be found out, air mass flow rate 9 kg per second. So, work per unit mass into mass flow rate is the power, you know everything. So, power requirement is now 1746 kilowatt, all right. Now, the second part is the inlet angles of impeller vanes at root and tip. Now, at root and tip, if you want to find out the impeller angles, then what will happen? Let us find out an root or tip anywhere at any representative section. It may be root, it may be tip. Okay. That means, it may be root or it may be tip that either it is, this is the root and this is the tip. So, root and tip, axial flow velocity is constant, the normal uh, flow velocity is constant, it is given there. Uh, okay, we will assume that. However, now what happens is that if we know the E1, the rotor speed and V1 and VR1, if this is this alpha, just I wrote, I draw the diagram. So, tan alpha is E1 by V1. So, I have to know the flow velocity or the relative velocity tan alpha is O V1 by sorry tan alpha is V1 by U1. So, this is if the if I know the at root this velocity then it will be root angle at the root at the tip it is angle at the tip. Now, root and tip U1 will be found out based on the root and tip diameter that I know because I know the rotational speed I know the rotational speed. I know the I tip diameter, I know the I root diameter, but here I nev I do not, I know neither V1 nor VR1. So, how can I find out? So, this type of problem is based on a trial. What trial? How to find out V1? So, V1 is not known. Now, if you see from the mass flow rate basis, mass flow rate is given rho A F V1. Okay, now A F is given. How A F is given? A f is given because I tip diameter and I root diameter is there. So, one can find out A f as pi into 0 0.3 square minus 0 0.15 square by 4 and this become is equal to 0 0.053 meters. So, I know A f. So, I have to this two I know. So, what is that? I have to make a trial. Guess for guess for rho and find out v1. How to guess for rho? This rho for example, trial 1, this is a trial method, trial 1. I guess rho from the total pressure P1 T R T1 T at impeller I. I know T1 T, I know P1 T based on this I find out and this value is given 1.1 bar into 100 by 0 0.287 into 295. This is the value given here. Yes, 1.1 bar. So, this in terms of kilo joule, kilo uh, this uh, Newton per meter square I am uh, converting, this unit is there. That is why I have written 0 0.287 which is this value. It should be 10 to the power 5 that another 10 to the power 3 then it will be 287 the characteristic gas constant. You see that consistent unit it is written and it becomes 1.30 kg per meter cube. Now, if you know this rho 1 first trial this rho 1 or rho 1 trial 1 you put that thing rho 1 and if you know the mass flow rate is known mass flow rate is already given in the problem what is the mass flow rate? mass flow rate is 9 kg per second, you get a value of V1. Now, when you get the value of V1, how to iterate? There should be a base on which you will iterate. When you get the value of V1, you can calculate the corresponding temperature, dynamic temperature by V1 Cp. For example, one this density you get, from this density you find out the V1. So, from with this density if you find out the V1, then V1 for one trial will be 131 meter per second. So, when you know the V1, then what you do with this V1, you calculate 
the for 131 second v 1 square by 2 into 1.005 into 10 to the power 3 the corresponding temperature. So, if you know this temperature you can calculate the static temperature T 0 1 minus this 8.5 K T 0 1 we know. So, therefore, we can find out the static temperature and at the same time we can find out this is a little laborious calculation I know, but this is usually done in the design the static pressure as as I told you the formula earlier the static pressure and static uh, total pressure is related to the static temperature and total temperature to the isentropic relation. So, I get P 1 when I get P 1 and T 1 I can find out rho 1 as P 1 by R T 1 that means by guessing a rho based on the stagnation condition I find out a V. When V is found out I find out the dynamic equivalent temperature and with that temperature I can find out the static temperature and the static pressure by isentropic relation. When these two things are known static pressure and temperature then rho 1 is P 1 by RT that means rho is getting corrected. With this rho I find out again the corrected velocity. So, this way both rho and V rho 1 and v 1 1 v 1 1 and rho 1 1 rho 1 is getting corrected. So, that we get a converged value when we have a converged value then we get v 1 when we get the v 1 which is constant the axial velocity of flow throughout the impeller passage is same that means it is same as the at the root and tip then what we will do when we will use the peripheral speed at the root then we will get the angle of the vein at the root and at the tip then I will get the angle at the tip and if you do so then you will get I am giving you this value the V 1 converged value of V 1 comes out to be 140 meter per second and you tip you find out pi into as the value is given you check the rotational speed into tip diameter 273 meter per second and the u root is equal to just half the diameter is half meter per second and alpha root that by tan alpha that formula v 1 by u perpendicular by base v 1 by u it becomes 46 degree and alpha t becomes 27 degree that is 20 minute in more from where I have taken this is the value. So, there is an iterative process by which you have to do. Okay. Thank you. Today after this.